For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God So This is the day that the Lord has made. And is there anybody here who came because you're glad that you're a part of it? 
But we're not only glad to be a part of this day, we're also glad to be able to celebrate this day, the life of Sister Sylvia Chita. We're not here just because she died. We're here because she lived. We're here because she loved. We're here because she was a part of our lives. And so let's give God some praise for this wonderful gift of a woman named Sylvia Jeta. We're going to have an Omega service now by the Alpha Pi Chi sorority, and so we ask that members of that sorority come now as you participate in your Omega service. Good morning. My name is Reverend Alita Waters, and I am here with representation of Alpha Pi Chi National Sorority Incorporated. With us today are our national regional president, Frida Perry, standing. Also our chapter president that Sylvia Jeter was a member of, Evelyn Kenley, and another of Sylvia Jeter's sorority sisters, Carl Bronner. Our condolences to the family, to the church, to her family members, and to her friends. We have a resolution to read today. In loving memory of Sylvia Jeter, memories build a special bridge. Our memories build a special bridge when loved ones have a part to help us feel we're with them still and soothe a grieving heart. Our memories span the years we shared, preserving ties that bind. They build a special bridge of love and bring us peace of mind. Emily Matthews. Alpha Pi Chi National Sorority Incorporated Resolution. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now is in store for me a crown of righteousness. Second Timothy chapter four, verses seven through eight. If there ever was a woman who loved and served her fellow man, Sylvia Jeter was one. Whereas God Almighty has seen fit to call from among us this matriarch, worthy servant, faithful leader, and dedicated member of Alpha Pi Chi National Sorority Incorporated, and whereas Sylvia has been a beacon of light in our sorority and was a glowing light in her church, community, and profession. She was a shining example of a true woman of Alpha Pi Chi. And whereas Sylvia began her Alpha Pi Chi National Sorority Incorporated journey as a member of the Alpha Alpha chapter of Arlington, Virginia in 1997. And whereas Sylvia's love for the sorority grew strong under her big sister and mentor, Mildred Vollen. And whereas Sylvia's love for the sorority and leadership skills led her to serve as the chapter's second vice president, financial secretary, and recording secretary. Also recording secretary for the Northeast Region Board of Directors. And whereas Sylvia had a passion for organizing social events and was instrumental in coordinating many of Alpha Alpha social events. And whereas Sylvia loved helping others in her community and volunteered her time at the food bank. And whereas Sylvia cherished the quality time she spent with her daughter Kelsey, sons Kevin and Todd, their families and especially their children who she adored. And whereas God Almighty heard her cry, pitied her every groan, and carried her to an eternal home where there is no more sorrow, no more pain, no more death. Sylvia Jeter has taken the three steps to heaven, out of self into the bosom of Jesus, waiting in glory. Now therefore it be resolved that the officers and all members of Alpha Pi Chi National Sorority Incorporated joined with her family, her church, and all of her friends in gratitude and praise to Almighty God for lending us Sylvia Jeter 
as she personified the true meaning of sisterhood. And be it also resolved that we now bow in humble submission to the will of our Heavenly Father, who has taken our loved one from our midst on March 18th, 2024. And be it further resolved that we extend to her loving family our heartfelt sympathy in their loss and commend them to God, who will heal their sorrows. And be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family of Sylvia Jeter at St. John Baptist Church in Columbia, Maryland, and a copy be placed in the records of Alpha Alpha Chapter, Arlington, Virginia, of Alpha Pi Chi National Sorority Incorporated, presented this 13th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2024. Respectfully submitted, Alpha Pi Chi National Sorority Incorporated, Janice M. Granger, National President, Frida Perry, Northeast Region President, Evelyn Kenley, Alpha Alpha Chapter, Arlington, Virginia, President. Thank you. Thank you, sisters of the Alpha Pi Chi Sovereignty, for your tribute, for your celebration of Sister Sylvia's life. We're going to be led now with our music ministry as they lead us in singing our opening hymn, immediately after which we will have our consoling prayer given to us by Pastor Margie Matthews.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's because he lives. Life is worth living. Charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Today, O oh Father, we are here to give you glory and honor for the life of Miss Sylvia, a woman who was beautiful inside and out, O oh God, who had a mind to serve you in many different ways, in ways that she did not always talk about, but she was about the work of God. And for that, we are thankful, O oh God. But still in our hearts, for those who are, of us who are left, oh God, we are feeling a loss. And during those times of loss, oh God, we need you closer to us. Closer than close, oh God. And Father God, we are glad that you are here with us. No matter what we are feeling and no matter what we are going through, oh God. Father God, we are glad that you are here with the entire family, with Kelsey and Regina and Todd and Kevin and all their spouses and the offspring, oh God. For Miss Sylvia loved her family and she enjoyed being with us us oh God and Father God we know that from heaven she is with us as an angel now oh God and Father God we are grateful for angels and Father God we ask that you bless and keep all the friends and the family and those who she loved and who love her oh God Father God, it's not always easy on this side of the road when we lose a loved one. But God, we take comfort in knowing that you are near. We take comfort in knowing that there will be a song in our heart that will remind us of, of Miss Sylvia, for she had joy. And Father God, right now, we're looking for the joy, oh God. We're looking for the hope that we can only find in you, oh God. And Father God, we ask that in the continuing days that you would continue to have persons come along just to give some words of cheer some words of remembrance in the midnight hour when we don't feel like that things are going the way we want it to go. When we feel alone because we have lost a special person in our life, oh God. But Father God, we know that you will send the comforter. That the comforter, the Holy Spirit is always with us, oh God, dwelling in us, oh God, and that you love us just like we love you. Father God, we ask that you be with this entire congregation who Miss Sylvia participated in many different ways, oh God. We ask that you be with everyone who loved her. In the holy, precious name of Jesus, we pray this, believing that it will be so. Amen. Amen. We're going to have... A, uh, a time now for us to give thanks uh, to God for Sister Sylvia's life as we view the slideshow. And so if we could have the production team put the slideshow on the screen. And as we are viewing the slideshow, I just want everybody to join us in singing a familiar song of the church, and that is, Thank You, Lord.
Let's give God some praise for our, that wonderful walk down memory lane. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful tribute to your family. What a wonderful tribute to a wonderful woman. We're now going to have the reading of the obituary given to us by a sister Janelle Pruitt immediately after which we'll have our Old Testament reading uh, read by Sister Sheila Owens, and then we'll have our New Testament reading by Sister Brenda Trueheart. Hello, everyone. It's really hard to follow up on the montage, so please bear with me. Um, my name is Janelle Pruitt. I am Sylvia's um, bonus granddaughter, so to speak. Um, love her as my own, and I'm honored to be here with you all to celebrate her life. On Monday, March 18th, 2024, following a brief illness, Sylvia Bentley Jeter, devoted mother, grandmother, and friend, peacefully departed this life at Shady Grove Hospital with her children lovingly by her side. Sylvia was born to Walter Bentley and Clara May Walker in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on January 14, 1939. A younger brother, William Minifield, deceased, would also become an integral part of Sylvia's childhood. As a young child, she was baptized and became a member of the Calvary Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 
where she began, began her faithful Christian journey. Sylvia attended Heron Hill Junior High School and matriculated to Shinley High School, where she enjoyed performing as a majorette with the Elks Club and Hall City. She was also a member of the school choir and was one of the three students responsible for composing the school song. She had fun roller skating on the weekends and spent time at social activities with her girlfriends throughout her teenage years. Following her high school graduation in 1957, Sylvia met and married Eugene Jeter. Their loving union produced three children, Kevin Eugene, Todd Keith, and Kelsey Janae. She enjoyed career success with various employers in Pittsburgh area, such as Marlene Bridal Shop, the, tubercul the tuberculosis, excuse me, League of Pittsburgh, and ultimately accepted a long-held position as an administrative assistant with the Atlantic Richfield Oil Company, one of the largest oil companies in the world during this time. The family would remain in Pittsburgh until 1983 when Sylvia relocated with her employer to Reading, Pennsylvania. In 1989, she re relocated again, settling in Columbia, Columbia, Maryland, and continued her career as an administrative assistant with the Department of Defense at the National Pentagon, the United States Department of Labor, and OSHA in Washington, D.C. Sylvia has a passion for all things community and would spend her life in service as a member of many community and civic organizations. In 1969, Sylvia was installed as one of the initiating members of the Pittsburgh chapter of the Justice, Unity, Generosity Service Organization, known as JUGS. JUGS is a nonprofit group geared toward community engagement and service. If we have anyone who is here today who is a part of the JUGS, please stand. We'd like to recognize you. You raise your hand, stand. We appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for the support. During her time with JUGS, Sylvia served as the recording secretary, planned and partic participated in annual fundraising events such as the Living Ad Ball, and hosted memorable card parties. Over the years, the ladies formed an unbreakable bond of sisterhood and family that span their lifetimes. Sylvia was also a member of Alpha Phi Chi Sorority Inc., a national sisterhood of predominantly African-American professional women who aim, whose aim is to provide scholarship service and support throughout their communities. A member since 1997, Sylvia held many key positions within the sorority, including Northeast Regional Secretary, chapter vice president, financial secretary, and recording secretary. She was known as one who could always be counted on to share valuable ideas to provide examples of how best to execute activities in support of their mission of lighting the way for learning and living. Sylvia's sorority sisters described her as someone who loved to have fun, socialize, and bright light to all who encountered her. We'd also like to give a special thank you to her sorority sisters and her chapter sorority for attending today. Thank you. Sylvia had a love for reading. She spent many years as a member of the Edmondson Avenue Book Club, a branch of the Incock Pratt Library. Her book club friends remember her as a member who actually read all the assigned literature and who could provide an articulate review of any book after its reading. She was always on the ready to be of service and was one of the members who participated in reading to seniors in the local community nursing homes and re rehabilitation centers. Sylvia's legacy of sincerity, caring, attentiveness, and community engagement continued well into her senior years when she became a member of the Columbus Pals group. 
PAL's mission is continued social engagement for the senior residents of Columbia, Maryland. If we have anybody here from the PALS group, please stand and raise your hand so we can recognize you. Thank you for your attendance. PALS mission is continued social engagement for senior residents in Columbia, Maryland. The group enjoyed outings such as lunch dates, attending plays and movies, weekly card parties and game nights. The group made it a point to celebrate each other's birthdays and shared countless hours of laughter and friendship. Sylvia joined and became a faithful member of St. John's Baptist Church in Columbia, Columbia, Maryland, where she served on the choir and usher boards and was a member of the senior ministry, the Golden Hearts. Sylvia's love for all things Steel City and even more her infectious incitement for her beloved Pittsburgh Steelers sparked a long life, a lifelong, excuse me, sparked a lifelong game day tradition in her family. On any given football Sunday, she could be found posting up and game ready, enjoying food and family and friends and hooting and hollering for sure in support of the Steelers Nation. She loved spending time at family gatherings and having dinners out. Sylvia was known for her love of fine desserts, amen, <laughs> and proudly enjoyed sharing reality TV antics with her granddaughters, calling it her guilty pleasure indeed. <laughs> Sylvia's legacy of love will live on through her children, Kevin Jeter, wife Latifah, Todd Jeter, Kelsey Stewart, husband Coretta, and bonus daughter, Regina Pruitt. <laughs> Sylvia's legacy will also shine through her six grandchildren, Danielle Nicole, Todd Keith, Kevin Eugene, Taylor Janae, Donnie Boswell, and Kaya Blue, all of whom affectionately, affectionately referred to her as Bima. I will be reading from Psalms 1, verses 1 through 5. Blessed is the one who does not walk in steps with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on this law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, who yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prosper. Not so for the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteousness. Again, I've read Psalms 1, 1 through 5, and I I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 through 9, and verses 16 through 18. Let light shine out of darkness. I'm sorry. But God who said, Okay, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. For we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. 
We are hard, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Sorry. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, though inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and monetary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, not on what's seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. As we continue our celebration, we're going to have tribute, our reflections given now. And so if there's anyone that would like to give a reflection, we invite you to come to the podium on the floor to my far right. And we ask that you might keep your reflections to two minutes or less. Anyone who would like to give a reflection Please make your way over uh, to the podium on the floor uh, so that we can hear your reflections and celebrate a wonderful life. Family is such a special word. Some family you're born into, and some families you're blessed with. Sylvia was my blessing, my sister, my friend, my confidant. Friends for over 80 years. How many people in here could say that? That you've been friends for over 80 years. That's how it was. Oh, the memories we shared. I think it's going to take us a little longer, take me a little longer to express it. I have a lot to say. We've been friends for as long as I can remember. At five years old, Sylvia and I were in a Tom Thumb wedding together. I was the bride, and she was my bridesmaid from five. That's how far I can get it straight. Okay, I'm mixed up now, but I can get it straight then. We were in many different organizations together, including the Eastern Stars, Irene Kaufman Scalman. We were on the Hill City Majorettes team together in middle school. You couldn't tell us nothing as Majorettes. Now, we were twirling those batons. I can see us now in those white shirts, blue skirts, and long white boots. She was a year older than me, so she got to march with the older girls. She came to my house one day with this big white major red hat on, white boots. I was some kind of jealous. I mean, this is upsetting me to no end because I hadn't arrived there yet. Anyways, we went all through high school and stuff together. After graduation, life took us in different directions. She was out of school, working and all and I still had a year or so in school to go. So Sylvia at one point moved to Cleveland for a while to work and help take care of her grandmother who was ailing. However, she had to return to Pittsburgh to then take care of her mother who was ailing. She was always taking care of somebody. 
oh, how happy I was to be reunited with my friend. Not because her grandmother or her mother was ill, but because she was coming back to me. At least that's how I felt. I felt she was coming back to me. Anyways, how happy I was to be reunited with my friend. As luck would have it, we started dating men who were best friends. And then we had the nerve to marry him. We did everything together as couples, including having children around the same time. The running joke in the hospital with our gynecologist was which one is delivering now, Ham or Jeter? We were together so much that people would get us mixed up. They would sometimes call me Sylvia and her Janice. It got to the point that we got tired of explaining it. Because people seen us together so much, when they called us different names, we just said, oh, OK, hey, and answered. <laughs> you know, because when you said, that's not me, then they'll say, are you sure? Well, we know who we are. As you can imagine, our band, bond grew even closer throughout the years. And we were almost inseparable, especially when we moved closer to each other. It felt like all good, enjoyable things always involved me and Syl. Even when the hubbies and children would still find time to support our community. We joined a, a group together called the JUGs, in which we did a lot of community service and formed an even closer bond and sisterhood. As we aged, Sylvia moved to Maryland, and even though we were now miles apart, we always kept in touch. The last time Syl was in Pittsburgh, she spent the night at my house. And we were like two kids laughing all night long. We didn't sleep at all, going through uh, scrapbooks and everything, just giggling. We looked at old pictures and was reminiscing. We shared our love for each other's years of friendship and had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. The next day when it was time for her to leave, and her sons came to pick her up because they were all riding back together. We had a harder time than usual saying goodbye to each other. We kept hugging and finding reasons for her to stay a little longer. Uh, go back and get this. Go back and get that. Do this, do that. Meantime, the men were getting upset because they had to get back to work. OK? I think it, it, the reason why was, I, I don't know. Maybe because that we had just shared so many things that night. Finally, after finding many reasons to stay a little longer, tears started forming in both of our eyes. Oh, we tried hard to hold back from crying. Finally, they just got upset with us and decided it was time to leave. They picked Sylvia up, put her in the van, picked me up, and put me on my porch. Finally had to leave. When that car pulled off, I think I cried until they got to Breezewood. It was like someone was just leaving me. I could feel it. I could feel it. OK? Never thinking that was the last time I would see my sister. But oh, how I thank God for that last gift of time with her. Sylvia, I miss you. I love you. And I'm so thankful for all the memories we shared. Rest easily. Love you. Janice. Thank you. Sylvia was my favorite aunt who gave me my favorite cousin. Um, I would drive to work, and I service a couple schools, so I'd call Sylvia, and our running joke would be, I'd say, hey, Sylvia, baby, what you doing? It's about 10 o'clock. She said, girl, you know I'm still in the bed. And we would die laughing because um, I was jealous. I could tell her, when I grow up, I want to be like you. So um, I just want to say I, I love you, I miss you, and don't forget to come visit me in my dreams.
Good morning. I'm Regina Pruitt. <laughs> Sylvia was definitely a second born to me. I came to the Jeter family about 35 years ago. She was the person that pulled me into the fold. She loved me. She loved my children. I'll never forget her. I won't forget the good times that we had. And we had a lot. Fortunately, we had a lot from here to Baltimore, from here to Pittsburgh, anywhere. And we even worked together at one point uh, briefly at Howard University. I always th want to thank her for her love, attention, affection. She will be missed. Thank you. When I saw Mrs. Ham get up here, I was one of those uh, living ads for the Jugs dancers when I was 13, 14, and 15. And I tell you, that was such a formative time in my life. Those ladies set an example of the woman that I have become. They uh, were very community involved. There was, they would uh, buy us cute little outfits and get our hair done. And, you know, we thought we were something, you know? Uh, little, little girls uh, dancing down the aisle, and people would pay money to see us dance, you know? It wasn't like what they're doing today with the poles, but, <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> my mother sent me to ballet school, okay? And a tap and, and jazz. So um, they cultured, they, they, with, along with our parents, they helped to culture. Miss Ham, I could not get over that. She used to have the most beautiful hair. She had big hair, you know? Yeah, they all did. They all did. And uh, Sylvia worked with my sister at Atlantic Richfield. And my mom and, and me and my other sister, we babysat. Kelsey. She was the most beautiful baby I had ever seen. And I named my daughter Kelsey after that young lady sitting right there. Um, life is something, you know. We, we don't realize how blessed we are as people come in and out of our lives. But uh, Sylvia was my fifth sister. I had four sisters and Sylvia was the fifth one. She was welcomed in. My mom loved her just like she was her own. I am so grateful that you are who you are, and I know where you come from. So you be strong. God is faithful, and he is able to do exceedingly above whatever you could imagine. I looked at you and just, oh, I just, I can see you as that little baby. You were so precious. So family, God bless you all. Miss Ham, love from 55 years. Can you believe it? 55 years ago. But I am grateful for the jugs. They weren't J-U-G-S. They were the jugs. And, and that's what they were known by. So uh, it's a blessing. God bless you all. Thank you. My name is Barbara Neesmith. I met Sylvia five and a half years ago. We moved into Hampshire Village the same day. We didn't know each other. People kept telling us how much we looked alike, and we were twins. And we never met, 
you know, we met about three weeks after we moved in there, and uh, the assistant manager grabbed me by the hand, took me over to Sylvia, and, and introduced her, and we became friends. Ever since, it was like we knew each other forever. We went shopping and ordered things at fast food places and drove off without picking up our, <laughs> without picking up our meals and would crack up after we got home and realized that we don't have our food. <laughs> but uh, I love Sylvia and I am going to miss my friend. Rest in peace, Sylvia. I cannot believe we are here. I thank God. He let my mother live <laughs> until I was this ripe old age of 38. <laughs> Whew, thank you, Jesus. <sighs> she got them old sons, but boy. <laughs> So I just wanted to speak and honor her today. And I don't want to ramble, but there's some things I want you to know about my mother. She's a true mama bear. So protective of her cubs. We couldn't even talk about each other to her. She would cuss us out. <laughs> she took being a mother very seriously. It was her number one priority. She loved us the way we needed to be loved. We had such individual needs. She catered her love to each and every one of us. She loved her grandbabies. She will forever be B mom. She was your greatest cheerleaders. She doted over those grandbabies. And she would not be the first one to bring the pictures out, but if you bought yours out, she was gonna, <laughs> gonna show you her beautiful grandbabies. Aren't they beautiful? My mother was fiercely independent until the day she died. She did everything for herself. She drove, shop, just like her twin said, she was they were just out in these streets, not paying for food, evidently. <laughs> she's a rock. She's a rock for us. And she was a praying grandmother. Every time I would bring something to her about anything going on in my life, she would just say, we're going to have to pray about it. we just going to have to pray about it. Now, don't be fooled. She was feisty. She would tell you off in a nanosecond. Real good, I mean real good. I have uh, two quick stories. One of them, if my Reading people remember, y'all remember there used to be a um, fashion bug down there by the Boscos? Yeah. Well, I had me some Jordache jeans on layaway. On layaway. We finally went down to get my Jordache jeans, and that woman said something. I don't even remember what she said. My mother told her, you know, you can do one thing. Go and give me my money back. Wait a minute, we're not. We're not giving my money back. We're getting my jeans. It's been a month. I want my jeans. So I did not get short ass jeans that day. Another funny story is me and Shay. Shay always is the core of a lot of our issues. We were all at the mall together, me, my mother, and Shay. We were probably about 10 or 11. And we, um, got separated from my mother for a very long time. And I was a little scared because I figured she was gonna surely cuss us out. And Shay was like, no, no, she probably just want us to go be independent, go to the stores, she ain't worried about us. <laughs> Not true. 
when you heard the name over there, that's back when you could announce names in the mall. When they announced Kelsey Jeter over the speaker, I looked at Shay and said, you done got me in something right now. We done got us in a fix. And she, 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 cussed, us, she cussed us out, both of us. <laughs> All jokes aside, I watched my mother do life and do life well. I'm proud of her. She'd always say, it's getting old thing, it ain't for the week. But mommy, you remain independent to the end. You lived a life on your terms and you honored God in your private times and in your prayer life and your years of service. Today we honor you and I know you're here and you're always going to be here. I know what you would say to make me feel better because you wrote me a letter more than 20 years ago. So in your words, I am comforted by your words. Kelsey, you are my heart. You are mother's love. Since I first saw you on December 3rd, God blessed us with you for a reason and we thank him. I have been at a total loss for words to express how very proud of you I am, which is what I'm attempting to do today. You will accomplish, accomplish everything you desire because you will simply reach out and claim it as your own. I can see that quality in you. You're everything I could have hoped for in a daughter and so admired by others. God made you special and he doesn't make mistakes. I'm right there behind you, girlfriend. I love you, mom. I love you, mommy. We thank everyone for your reflections today as we celebrate such a wonderful woman's life. We're going to have Deacon Jonathan Alexander come and he's going to read our church resolution. And then we're going to have Erica Hammock come and she's going to read acknowledgments. Immediately after that, we're going to have Cynthia Givens come and she's going to give us our hymn of preparation. Good afternoon. Will all in the church, by the family, please stand? while I read the resolution. Thank you. <clears throat> resolution of Sylvia Jeter. Whereas Sylvia Jeter joined St. John Baptist Church on March 12th, 2012 by Christian experience. Throughout her tenure with St. John, Sister Jeter served God as a trusting and faithful servant. And whereas Sister Jeter had a strong, had strong Christian beliefs, she loved the Lord and was the type of person to say, pray about it, give it to God. There's nothing we can do on our own, Ms. Jeter's words. Whereas Sister Jeter truly loved St. John, she felt she really belonged and built some strong relationships here. When she was younger and more able, she regularly attended worship services and participated in several ministries, including the Usher Ministry, the Senior Choir, and the Golden Hearts. She was active in community work in her younger years throughout her sorority, or through her sorority. Whereas Sister Jeter was ladylike, funny, and family-oriented, she enjoyed collecting butterflies and anything with a butterfly on it. She loved a good crab cake and would happily replace dinner with dessert. 
She was a huge Steelers fan, as we heard, and, enjoying, and enjoyed watching tennis, especially Venus and Serena Williams. Whereas Sister Jeter's real love was spending time with friends and family. Her kindness, dedication, and loyalty to her family and friends are gifts that will never be forgotten and will be greatly missed. And whereas Sister Jeter's faithfulness and diligence to St. John Baptist Church were demonstrated by her commitment throughout the years. <clears throat> Therefore, be it resolved on this 13th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2024, we, the members of St. John Baptist Church, commend the soul of Sister Sylvia Jeter on the safekeeping of our Lord God Almighty. Amen. Good afternoon to Kelsey Stewart, children, family, and, Soror and, and Sylvia Jeter. My family and I deeply sadden the learning of the passing of your mother and my Sylvia Jeter. No words can really express the sorrow in our heart to you and your family and the loss of your loved one. I met Sylvia when I was, when she pledged membership to the Alpha Alpha chapter in Arlington, Virginia. She was a vibrant person, eager to fellowship, learn, and to give herself in the community service. She engaged in the program of the chapter, regionally and national level. Sylvia had a beautiful personality, along with her physical beauty and encouraging smiles. As a sir, sir, <clears throat> and my being the pastor's wife, she was very supportive in attending many of my church at activities which I was engaged in. Sylvia became an active member for a while, and when she told me she was reinstated her membership, I was delighted and excited about her rejoining us. However, our God had other plans for her. Please know she was loved by many, and I care deeply about, and I am in prayer with you, and your Heavenly Father will comfort you and his great love. Your loss is in heaven's gain. The loss of a mother is unlike any other. She taught you to be who you are today and gave you the strength to find your own way. And although she passed and is within time to leave, you may rejoice in all that she left behind. And after some time of grief, relieve the memories to share the stories. You know she'll always be part of you and always grown to be and happy in your heart. Our deepest sympathy, the loss of your mother, the Alpha Pi Chai National Chapter. speak for me. May the work I've done, let it speak for me. When the best I've got to give, all of my mistakes he will forgive may the work I've done 
Lord, let it speak for me. May the service I've given, let it speak for me. May the service I've given, let it speak for me. In my grave, there'll be nothing left to be said. May the service I've given, Lord, let it speak for me. The work I've done, you know it seems so small. setting our souls on fire. Cynthia, for setting our souls on fire with that wonderful. That's why you sang like that. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we invite you to turn with us to the Old Testament book of Exodus. Uh, we're going to be reading from the third chapter verses 13 through 15. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. Hear these words from the word of God. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered 
from generation to generation. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the applying of this his holy and most righteous word. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. A Father and our God, if you will, we ask that you might let the very words of my mouth and the very meditations of all of our hearts to be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Let all the people of the Lord say amen. <clears throat> For a few moments today, we just want to hang these words on the hinges of your mind. Some things to celebrate about Sylvia and her God. Some things to celebrate about Sylvia and her God. In these few verses, family and friends, we learn a lot about our God. Because the first thing that we learn is that God says that I am. And when he said I am, he meant that I am what you need me to be. Because if you need a doctor, then God says that's what I am. And if you need a healer, God says, that's what I am. And if you need a comforter, God says, that's what I am. And if you need a constant companion, God says, that's what I am. And if you need a provider, God says, that's what I am. Because whatever you need, God says, that's what I am. Because I am what you need me to be. Because with other small G gods and with other idols, the best they can say is that they were, but God says that I am. Because God says that I am now, and I am then, and I am tomorrow. And he says in our text to Moses to tell the children of Israel that I am and more than my people need me to be. Now church, God, God and Sylvia they had some things in common. When I reflected on Sylvia's life, I couldn't help but realize that God and Sylvia had a few things in common. And when I say that they had a few things in common, I'm not suggesting that Sylvia was God, but it does suggest that she reminded me about certain things about God. Because the first thing, the first thing that, that I think about when I think about about Sylvia and God is that like God, Sylvia always had something good. Sylvia always had something good because when it came to her action, she was always doing something good because she knew how to love you and that was good. She knew how to encourage you, and that was good. She knew how to support you, and that was good. She knew how to help you, and that was good. She knew how to make you feel special, and that was good. She knew how to make you feel important, and that was good, because whenever you were around Sylvia, she always did what you what she could to make you feel mighty good. And church, that's the way God is with his children, because every time you come to God, he always has something good for you, because he's got love, and that's that's good. And he's got peace, and that's good. And he's got joy, and that's good. And he's got faith, and that's good. And he's got grace, and that's good. And he's got mercy, and that's good. And he's got forgiveness, and that's good. And he's got power, and that's good. And he's got an eternal home in glory prepared for his children, and that's good. And so Sylvia and God had similar personalities because but Sylvia had a way of always doing something good. 
And so when it comes to, to Sylvia Jeta, she, she and God had a few things in common because Sylvia had a way of always doing something good. But then the next thing that reminds me about Sylvia and God is that because she always had something good, people loved to come to her house. And because she had something good, people, people loved to come to her house because people used to say that, that when they came to, to Sylvia's house, they didn't want to leave because there was just something about going to Sylvia's house that they just couldn't get at anybody else's house because Sylvia had created such an environment in her house that it made people want to come there and not want to leave there. And church, that's what it's like when you come to God's house. Because David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because when you come to God's house, you hear his word there and you feel his sweet presence there and you feel sweet fellowship there and you feel some hope there and you feel his presence there and you get some inspiration there and you get transformation there and you've seen and experienced some blessings there because there's just something special about coming to God's house because when you get there and the spirit gets to moving and the fire starts to falling and his people get to talking you don't want to leave what you experience when you come to God's house is there anybody here who can testify that you can come to God's house one way but you won't leave God's house the same way because there are blessings that you receive when you come to his house and so and so Sylvia she, she had some things in common with God because she had a way of doing something good and because she always had such goodness in her when you when you came to her house she didn't want to leave her house but the last thing that I think we ought to celebrate about Sylvia is that Sylvia she knew that her God was an awesome God S Sylvia knew that her God was an awesome God and the reason she knew that he was an awesome God is because she knew that we serve a God of promise because our God not only makes promises but our God is so good that he keeps his promise and the reason I'm bringing this up today is because many of us know some people who make promises but they don't keep their promises but we serve the kind of God that can make the promise and can keep the promise and it comes to fruition just when it comes out of his mouth. That's why every now and then family and every now and then church we ought to thank God for keeping his promise because whenever you feel lonely just remember that God has promised that lo I'll be with you always even until the end of the world and whenever you feel like nobody cares. Just remember that he promised that you ought to cast all your cares upon the Lord because he cares about you. And then when you feel like your heart is heavy and when you feel like your heart is broken, just remember that Jesus promised that you ought not to let your hearts be troubled because if you believe in God, you also ought to believe in me because in my Father's house are many mansions and if it were not so, I would have told you and then whenever you're weeping because of a loss of a loved one just remember that God has promised that weeping may endure for a night but if you hold on just a little while longer joy I said joy joy will come in the morning but not only is God so awesome because he's a God of promise the last reason that God is so awesome is because he's a God of presence because he came down 
through 42 generations just to be with us on earth and his name is Emmanuel which is God with us and the good news is that we don't have a God that we have to go and get and we don't have a God that you have to go to the internet and have him shipped here in two days but we have a God who is present in our lives and we have a God that is with us all the time and so is there anybody here who came to give God some praise because we serve a God who is with us all the time because he's with you in the morning and he's with you in the midnight hour he's with you when you're sick and he's with you when you're well he's with you when you're sad and he's with you when you're glad he's with you in the boardroom and he's with you in the courtroom he's with with you when you're born and he's with you when you're dying and he's not just with you all of the time but the good news is that Sylvia's with him right now did you hear what I said I said the good news is that Sylvia's with him right now and I can hear Sylvia joining with the angels in glory as they sing oh hail the power of Jesus name let angels prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all but the good news is not just that Sylvia is with him right now but the good news is that he's with you right now and because he's with you right now you ought to talk to him right now and you ought to love him right now and you ought to worship him right now and you ought to lift up his name right now is there anybody here who came to praise him right now because God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that you could ask or think won't he do it won't he do it if you believe it say yeah if you know it say yeah if you're glad about it then let's give God the glory and let's give God the honor and let's give God the praise and say hallelujah 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 we've got something to celebrate because Sylvia and God had some things in common but we can also celebrate that she is now resting in the arms of a loving God and she's waiting for us to claim heaven as our home as well let's give God some praise for being a God who makes and keeps his promise we're going to prepare now for our closing prayer and recession and as we prepare for our closing prayer and recession we just want to give special thanks to everyone who served in whatever capacity today during this celebration service we want to particularly thank thank Deacon Jonathan Alexander for the way that he ministered to this family as they prepared for this service we want to thank our music ministry and our ushers we're going to after our closing prayer, invite family and friends to join us in the, in the fellowship hall for a repast. And there we'll be able to share and enjoy a spirit of fellowship where we can continue to encourage each other, continue to support each other, and continue to thank God for the life of Sister Sylvia Jeda. Let us get ready now, and we also want to thank Pastor Margie Matthews. Let's give God some praise for her. Come on, Pastor. After the prayer, we're going to 
have the family. They're going to recess first, and then after they've recessed out, we invite all of you to follow them, and then we'll make our way into the fellowship hall. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come praising you because you truly are the giver of all good and perfect gifts. You're not only the giver of life, but you're the giver of eternal life. And you're not only the giver of eternal life, but you gave Sister Jita, Sister Sylvia Jita, her life. And you allowed our lives to intersect and what a wonderful difference she made in our lives we thank you oh God for how she loved we thank you for how she served we thank you for how she gave and we thank you for the wonderful example that she has left now, O oh God, as we prepare to leave this place, help us to honor her and help us to celebrate and embrace her legacy by doing what we can every day to make a positive difference in somebody's life. Bless us individually and collectively is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all the people of the Lord say amen. Won't you stand now as the family prepares to recess? <laughs>